If the Denver Broncos want to break their eight-year playoff drought and make the playoffs next year under Sean Payton, they have got to unlock this offense. And I think the key to doing that is a massive upgrade at the tight end room. In this video, we are going to break down who I think could help us upgrade that tight end room. We're going to look at the NFL draft. Who are the tight ends I like there? Who might be some free agent tight ends we could snag? Who might be a dude or two we could get in a trade? And who might be on our roster now who we could bet on in the future? If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I break down all things Denver sports, and it helps me out if you would like and subscribe. So when we look at Sean Payton, it is easy to throw some uh, hate on him and, and just say he didn't live up to expectations. And obviously our offense wasn't what we had all hoped when we signed him in last offseason. But the fact of the matter is that there is no more important position in a Sean Payton offense than what he calls the joker role, that tight end role. Tight end is the hardest position in the NFL to learn other than quarterback because they're essentially playing two positions at once. They have to know all of the blocking calls that an offensive lineman knows, all the run checks, all of, uh, like, you, you hear a quarterback yell, 52 is the mic. Like, that recenters the entire defense and says, hey, that's that guy's the mic, meaning now I have this guy instead. And so you got to know all the stuff that an offensive lineman knows. Offensive linemen watch a ton of film, but then you have to know the entire route tree and be able to execute it at a high level, just like a receiver. And so that is why typically in the NFL, it takes a few years that most of the time rookie rookie tight ends don't come in and just crush it. You think of Kyle Pitts, the generational talent out of uh, Florida a couple of years ago, like he still isn't humming in that Atlanta offense like everyone thought he would. Remember uh, when the Bears got Greg Olson a bunch of years ago? Same thing. It takes a long time to learn the position, learn how to do both the blocking and the route running well. And um, and so it's even more important in a Sean Payton offense. He has coached amazing tight ends like Jason Witten, like Jeremy Shockey, like Benjamin Watson, obviously like one of the best to ever do it. Um, and if we just look here, he calls that position his uh, the joker position, uh, Taysom Hill. It, it's a position where you not only are um, a, a pass catcher, but you truly are the joker in that you trick the defense, and whatever the defense is lined up to stop, that person becomes a Swiss Army knife and does things to exploit the weakness in that defense. So if all of a sudden the tight end is lined up with a, a skinny 180-pound corner, well, guess what? We're going to switch to a run, and that guy's going to, the, the tight end is going to light you up and knock you back 20 yards. Uh, if all of a sudden they load the box to stop the run and you're guarded by a slower linebacker, uh, that tight end is running. If they lift the box for you to do like a, a fly route, all of a sudden that person is in wildcat or, or getting a handoff, and we saw that all the time with Taysom Hill. And so he calls that position the joker position. And coming in to this offseason, you heard him just sing incredible praises to uh, Greg Dulcich, saying, hey, this guy actually reminds me a lot of, he even said the name Jimmy Graham. And when you see Jimmy Graham and Sean Payton, you're like, let's go. And so I had super, super high hopes that he had that. And what you saw is that once Dulcich had the hamstring injury, uh, played, what, 30 snaps this year, you saw that Sean Payton had to shelve a lot of the offense that he had hoped for us, a lot of the really cool special stuff that we'd hoped in a Sean Payton offense. We couldn't run anymore because we brought in Troutman, who's just not as athletic as we have um, with Dulcich. And then we brought in Kroll, Lucas Kroll, who I think has the potential, but he didn't have an offseason to learn uh, he didn't have OTAs. He didn't have an entire mini camp. He didn't learn the playbook in a way where, you, you know, he got thrust into that Buffalo game. And even in that Buffalo game, do you remember him lined up in the backfield and he did an amazing uh, kind of route up the, the sideline and Russell Wilson just didn't see him. So I, I have very high hopes for both of those dudes. So I think as we look at how a tight end could fix this and the options that we have, option number one, we roll with who we have right now. I know if you look at what we had right now, it was abysmal. The Denver Broncos tight end room was the worst or next to worst in every single statistical category you could have with tight end, whether that is yards caught by tight ends, yards um, or touchdowns by tight ends or catches by tight ends. We were either 31st or 32nd in the league. So that is, needs to improve. So option one, number one is 
trust Lucas Kroll with an offseason. Like, he showed all of the physical tools. He just needs to figure out the whole playbook. So that would be option number one. Option two would be Dulcich. Ride with who you have. Trust his health. Trust that it was fluky. He talked at the uh, end of year locker clean out kind of interview. He said, I've never had injuries my entire life. I had the hamstring one. Then this really weird foot thing is what kept him out at the end. And he's like, I don't expect that to continue. So do we trust what we have in-house? Option number uh, three to me would be that if somehow Brock Bowers, the tight end from Georgia, who is just nasty, uh, if somehow he falls to us at 12, he is the fourth overall prospect in the draft right now on a lot of big boards. So when you rank it, not by position, but just – hey, this is the best guy, this is the next best guy, irregardless of need and position, he's the fourth ranked. So if somehow he falls to us at 12, we have got to snatch him up. I I see him a lot like Laporta, um, the tight end in Detroit who stepped in. And like I said, typically rookie tight ends don't do it. I think the the fact that Sean Payton has that mutual admiration with Dan Campbell and Dan Campbell saw success of a rookie tight end, I think that would make him a lot more inclined to go with a, a rookie if for whatever reason Brock Bowers does not fall to us at 12. I don't, I, and I don't think you trade up for a tight end. Um, there are some other rookies who, who are promising. And so we have a bunch of Big Ten rookies. Um, so you got a Michigan tight end, you got an Ohio State tight end, and a Penn State tight end. Uh, the Ohio State tight end seems like his route share is pretty much limited to go routes. Um, so he's really good on a go route, and he's a great um like got a big body to him, but he needs to learn a lot of the route tree. I watched a lot of Michigan football this year just because a lot of my family are huge Michigan fans. And his issue is he's not a great catcher of the ball. He he isn't attacking the ball in the air and, and catching it with his hands. He waits for it to come to his body a lot. I just think in the NFL, like that window is so small. You got to uh, aggressively attack it at the, at the point of attack. We've been burned before with Michigan tight ends. You guys remember getting Jake Butt and having really high hopes for him, and he didn't pan out. Theo Johnson is interesting to me. Uh, Sounds like he knows the whole route tree, and he has enough as a a blocker, according to a lot of people, to be able to um, hold his own there. Now, can he learn the playbook? Um, Is that offense in simpatico, if you will, with Sean Payton's offense? That remains to be seen. Another interesting thing could be, Dallin Holker later in the draft. I only watched the CSU CU game to be uh, frank with you, but I I liked what I saw out of him. I like keeping Colorado dudes in Colorado. That could be a very interesting uh, pickup in the draft. The thing I like about all of these tight ends would be, I think you could get all of them other than Brock Bowers in like the third or fourth round. So is is that worth it? We know this year, as of right now. We have not made any trades, but as of right now, we do not have a second round pick. So we pick 12 and then we have our third, fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, seventh round picks. So uh, really interesting to see there. The other option would be, are there any uh, free agent tight ends we might be interested in? And reading this first name uh, on this uh, Sports Illustrated article kind of made my heart hurt a little bit because the first one they listed was bringing Noah Fant back to Colorado. Uh, We remember drafting him early and having really high hopes for him, and he was part of that Russell Wilson trade to Seattle. He never made us pay in Seattle, but I think we all of the upside that we saw of him then, we still see now. Um, He he is somewhat like Julius Thomas in in that he is a great route runner. He's a great catcher. Uh, He he runs with the ball well, but he is not always the best blocker. And my hope would be under Sean Payton, does that is he able to convince him to be a willing blocker? And then uh, the tight ends in with the Raiders and the Chargers, both um, we could poach off of their rosters as well as they are free agents. So uh, my question for all y'all, because you are fantastic at giving me feedback and telling me what you think, is which of these would excite you the most? We run it back. We've already spent the money on Dulcich and Kroll. Do we trust them to get it done and just trust in another year of this system they can pick it up and make it work? Next option, do we get one of those Big Ten tight ends or the uh, Colorado State guy later in the NFL draft? And then the third option would be, do we get Brock Bowers um, at, at the 12th pick if he is there? And then finally, the last option would be, do we go to free agency and hope someone falls to us? 
Either way, it's a position we got to fix, and we got to fix it this year if we want to make the playoffs. So thanks for riding with me. Giddy up.